Salt Beauty and Dwyer. Tonight we have Pastor Doolittle from Calvary Baptist Church to the invitation. I love the Baptist, but where you guys read me? Um, Calvary Community. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Community. I love Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no cool. no comment. <laughs> okay, well, let's pray. <laughs> I didn't have my glasses on, so I didn't read it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it says Baptist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this board. And we know that with leadership, sometimes there's a lot of direction that's needed. There's a lot of wisdom that's needed. And I pray that you will direct the thoughts here tonight and give this board, Lord, with some understanding, and then, Lord, also the courage of conviction. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 And I do have another meeting to run to, so I'm sorry, I'll leave it in your capable hands. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah. Did you put that, that part about giving direction? You just put that in because I got the name of the church wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I had enough of that. <laughs> uh, I think we're going to do it all right. Please, please. Helen, would you need us? Sure. Our best pledge is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, do the roll call, please. Gutierrez? Here. Mayor? Nesta? Wilson? Here. Sea Clerk? Here. Towson? Here. Dillon? Here. Williams? Here. And then that one. Gosh. We're all set. Thank you. Uh, adoption of the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve the adoption of the agenda as presented. Support. Motion been made and supported to adopt the agenda as presented. Any questions, any changes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposition, we've got an agenda. Next, we've got the approval of the minutes for the July 7. 2015 regular meeting. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of July 7th, 2015 regular meeting as presented. Support. Motion made and supported to approve the minutes of the July 7th, 2015 regular meeting as presented. Everybody had a chance to read it over and make any questions, direction. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Special orders. Public comment. Anyone like to make public comment? Could you come forward now? Don't be rushed to the microphone. I have one. But no. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, Tonight, um, 
Rose and I had a conversation a while back, uh, occasionally having one of our department heads come to the meeting and kind of give us an overview, along with the residents who attend the meeting, um, of what's going on in their departments and that kind of stuff. Uh, so first on the agenda we have Parks and Rec update from our Parks and Rec director, Mr. Bill Wheeler. <laughs> Those offices down off the east. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, my service. Um, I just wanted to uh, come and let you know that uh, we had a couple big events in the month of July that uh, took place. The uh, Hardball Classic tournament took place on July 17th through the 19th. We had 32 teams, which was up from 18 from the previous year. Um, we had challenges with the weather over the weekend. We worked all day Friday to get the fields ready. I had a brief shower on Saturday, and the, uh, but the way the staff and the coaches and players and even some of the parents got out on the fields and got the diamonds ready, it was really, really cool to see And the tournament went on. We had teams from all over, Traverse City, Alpena, South Farmington, Ida, which is south of Dundee. They were back for their second year. Um, Flushing, the Thumb area, Bay City, Breckenridge, Gladwin, Canton, and some other local teams. Um, I wanted to sit down and figure out, uh, I learned a buzzword down in, at my conference in February called economic impact. So I sat down this morning and I figured out the economic impact of our tournament that we had, going through various formulas and stuff that are out there. Um, and the, the using those formulas, a national average for data and stuff, our approximate economic impact for that tournament was $35,000 brought into our community through hotels, food, gas, various other things that go into that. Um, formula is calculated by taking the number of teams, average number of athletes on those teams, multiply that by the average spectator ratio, which the national average is saying that 2.14 people will come with each athlete, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, siblings. So you take all those numbers, you come up with uh, approximately 1,400 in total attendance. Now you take that, you figure in the average cost of a hotel stay, which in our area is about 125, so you divide that by two, get 62.50, and then the average spending for national average is 32.50 per person. So you figure all that out, you get all broken down into percentages and all this other cool stuff, and you get about $35,000. So that's not bad for a weekend. Um, the bandits ran the concessions throughout the weekend. They grossed over $2,300 for that weekend, so that was, uh, all that will benefit our student athletes if all come back. So overall, it was a very successful weekend tournament. I wanted to just let you know how that went. Um, week after, I don't take any breaks. Week after, in conjunction with the Cass River Greenway, um, we hosted the Sun Daniel Cass River cleanup. I got some pictures that I'm going to pass around. Of the cleanup. Make sure you look at the second one there. That stack. <laughs> <laughs> that was on the front page of the Herald. Uh, had our township supervisor Augie and, nice. and our township manager Rose hauling out a car door out of the river. So um, we spent the morning of Saturday, July 25th, cleaning up a five to six mile stretch of the river between Dixie Highway and the historic bridge. There were approximately 55 volunteers that met up at Davis Park. You could get that breakfast. And then they came back and had a lunch. Um, volunteers walked the river, canoed the river, collected all types of trash. We were able to pull out 14 car tires, which Jimmy came down from Gold Lines and picked those up and recycled them for us. A large tractor tire, a car door, an old fan, even an engine block was pulled out of the river. So, um, In all, we filled up a 10-yard dumpster uh, with all the items. Um, there were local volunteers and others from Frank Muth, Vassar, Carroll, Greece that helped with the cleanup. Volunteers from the Reese High School Outdoor Club were on hand, along with residents from the Wolverine Pioneer Work and Learn Center out in Vassar. Um, wanted to thank our partners, the Township DDA, for their help you know, putting us on. The Casper Yacht Club, RA Monk Insurance, provided the lunch for all the volunteers. Uh, Frank Muth Boy Scouts provided the canoes. Grants of Graphics, the T-shirts, McDonald's, and Bridgeport for the breakfast, Billy's Contracting, Bavarian Inn, the 
and the Great Lakes Commission, which is the agency that I got a, a grant through to have the whole thing, uh, and the grant was $1,400 to help offset the costs. So overall, the event was huge success, I thought, and uh, look forward to doing it again in the future and keeping our river clean and safe for everyone to enjoy. So uh, future coming up in August. Again, we don't take any breaks. Uh, we have a big thing coming up. The Great Lakes Historical and Education Association will hold their annual rendezvous back here on the island in Davis Park. That'll be on August 14th through the 16th. It's a 1760s encampment uh, in which the public is invited to travel back through time and visit how life was during uh, what it was during this period. Uh, marine actors from around the Great Lakes, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, they'll come to Bridgeport. They will uh, set up camps along the river. Either the public will be invited to come out, take a look. They'll do demonstrations on hatchet throwing and stuff like that, but it's only the reenactors that are not allowed to do that. So, but they will spend the entire weekend back on our island. And they've been going back and trying to eradicate the island of poison ivy, which they didn't do a very good job. hockey has <laughs> got poison ivy. So Chief all. Duffy got poison ivy. <laughs> Everybody got poison ivy during the funeral. You know, I did not get poison ivy. I think I'm immune. <laughs> anyway, um, so that, that's coming up in August. Um, we're going to be working to get the island off tip shop shape for that. Um, but uh, if there's no questions, that's my little spiel and my update. When is that in August? August 14th through the 16th, next week. Thank you. Oh, another thing, too. Um, Bill mentioned the economic factor. Um, I know the ice cream shop got hit pretty hard, which was a good thing for them. Also, I'd gotten a call from Eva Stone, who owns a big boy restaurant, and she wanted to find out, and I talked to Bill about this, but um, let them know when we're having tournaments like that, because she said she had slammed really hard, which is a good thing. So, Bill's going to in the future. Hey, you got another one coming up, too, don't you? Uh, no, not this year. Next year. Oh, okay. I'm misunderstood then. Yep. Um, anyway, he's going to contact the local restaurants and that kind of stuff, the ice cream shop, to let them know so they can be ready. That's a good thing. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm glad you talked about the poisoning situation because I had to explain to Karen. Rose had to explain to Bob how her and I wound up with poison. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Steve will be on the movie this summer. Uh, I'm goes. Um, heating and ventilation is all complete. Um, the state will be in tomorrow to do the final on the boiler system and uh, we don't expect any issues. He's already been once had a couple corrections to make and so those have been done. And so that will happen tomorrow so that project will be complete. Um, Low Gas was awarded the bid to take care of the, some of the structural issues on the station. That project will start on the 24th and take about 20 days. And, um, <clears throat> That's going to include replacing any brick that's bad, taking care of all the mortar joints, all of that needs to be done, taking out the old ventilation fan on the south of, and the side of the building, and then re-bricking all of that, taking care of the soffit area out front, um, all the door, the wood around the, the large doors on the back of the station, because the back just really gets a lot of sun, a lot of the, most of the sun during the year. So that wood, those frames, and there's a large overhang there, so the, the wood frame to really take a, a beating. So all that needs to be replaced with quite a bit of dry rot. So all that will be done as well. And then they'll 
once we're done with all that, they'll seal the brick. They'll fill any holes from where antennas used to be mounted and all that kind of stuff as well. And then they'll seal, seal the brick with two coatings of some sealer that should make it last quite a long time. So and they're also changing out some vents on the outside where today they're, they're kind of short and we get a driving rain on the north end of the station. We'll actually get inside the vents we're going to get inside the ceiling tile. So they'll be taking those, correcting that as well. What's not being done is taking the hose tower down. We're only doing what we know we have to to keep the building going at this point. The hose tower will need to come down at some point, but it's not critical today, so that's why we're holding off on that. Same thing on the back apron that will have to be replaced, but we're holding off on that as well. So again, that will start on the 24th, so for about 20 days, you'll see a variety of contractors there. And we have some internal ventilation issues that are going on as well. Um, we're placing some internal fans. We've never had one in our utility room, so we're putting one in there. It gets quite a bit of moisture um, from running the, the laundry and, and then um, all of our water buckets and everything are in there. So that'll get done as well. <coughs> Other than that, um, our truck is on schedule for January. We do have a department up north interested in the Quint. And that also will be advertised nationally here shortly as well. I just put a seller, I just put a quick memo out to the Michigan Chiefs to let them know there was one available, see if somebody in the state was interested in it first. Had some calls on it, but one department in particular actually um, may actually be making us an offer on it, so that's good. Um, other than that, staffing-wise, we've been very busy. Um, we're way ahead of last year, well over 100 responses ahead of last year. A wide variety of calls. The highway's already given us a fit with the road construction, so um, that's been a problem for us so far. Um, our staffing is down. You know, we've got 21 people on the roster. We don't really only have about 13 that are responding on a regular basis. We've got one of our guys is on leave out of state working. Another one is, is off for some personal issues. We've got a couple guys that are working a lot, just a tremendous amount of hours. So they're not available. And uh, that's causing us some issues. We had a structure fire this weekend and we had nine people. We were able to manage it and that was fine, but um, that was actually, I was surprised that we got nine on a Saturday. It is an issue. We're not the only ones that are going through it. It's a problem nationally. <coughs> the National Volunteer Fire Council actually has gotten a federal grant to develop a nationwide marketing program. And we've lost over 100,000 volunteers in the fire service over the last couple <coughs> years. And not only have we lost 100,000 or 12% of our ranks, <coughs> but we're getting older. Um, back in 1990, um, the average I think only it's like 12% of volunteers were over the age of 50. Now it's 19%. And the population of volunteers that are under 30 has fallen. So it's us older guys that are sticking around to help, and the younger people aren't getting involved. So there's going, you're going to see we've gotten involved in that. Um, there'll be a lot of free materials for us to use locally to try and recruit people. So we'll be taking advantage of that, of that over the next year. So we do. We are still facing that, but the guys are hanging in there. They're, um, we've got a we've got a crew that uh, very committed. So they show up a lot. Um, what we don't want to do is get them burned out. So that's what we're trying, just trying to manage. Uh, other than that, um, we did put in for the FEMA grant for our air packs this year. I want to let you know we're in the same spot last year. So we've made it to the stack for approval. Our grant's been approved. It's just a matter of whether there's enough money to fund it. Got two hundred million dollars to give out. They had nearly a billion dollars in requests. So yeah, yeah, big gap. So we're in the running. Room, so we may very well still see that. Any questions for me on the station? Have you had any good applicants lately that are, that are people? That yeah, we we put on Nick Good on. Uh, Nick's doing well. Um, haven't been able to get him to a meeting because of his work schedule. He works at Applebee's, yep. and so he works. His shifts change all the time. Um, good young guy, uh, seems to really like it so far. He's progressing really well. He's I mean, working hard to get through his air pack. I've even actually taken him on a couple incidents with me, and um, he's done very well. So I think if he decides he really likes it, he sticks it out, he can be a great fire. He lives right up here in the village, so he's close by as well. Other than that, we do have a young man that's applied, that's applied today. He's actually a senior at Reese. He lives out on Airport Road. Really interested, he'd like to get involved, so he put in his app to be 18 here in another week, and we'll see if, if he might work out as well. So we need that. And then 
and they get involved and they get their, their friends to get involved as well. Good. Good. What was the program, program that was in the high school for the police and fire? Yeah, years it's, ago. it's an Explorer program. It's sponsored through the Boy Scouts of America. It's a great program. It's always done this. Um, we've had great years. We had a lot of a lot of people in it. And the last time we ran it on our own, we started out with eight and finished with five. Um, <clears throat> last year, we combined it with police and fire. We didn't have anybody interested on the fire side. Police wound up with what? Five or six? We ended up with about four. So there isn't a lot of interest from our youth to get involved. And it's not just here, it's, it's all over the country. I think keep in mind, Dave you Schneider know, and I are working on a project for all of you and the public to kind of show what's happened across our country with volunteers. And one of the issues that happens, we had the baby boomer population, which was like 78 million first, and then the next generation we dropped to almost half that. So we've got this massive pool of people that's half of what it was uh, for my generation. And um, so there, for, that, for that gap, there wasn't a lot of people to cheat, to, to draw in. And then the next generation went back up to about 73 or 74 million. So maybe as they start getting older, they'll get that group get more involved. <coughs> That's part of the issue nationwide is that we had far less births in that second generation, the generation after the Okay, we're all set. Thank you, Pam. <coughs> okay, we'll move on to new business. Uh, number one on the agenda is set a public hearing date to create an IFT district, which is an industrial facilities tax district for LB transportation. I'd like to make a motion to set a public hearing date of September 1st, 2015 to create an IFT district for the property number 09115043004000. And that's 5425 Dixie Highway and that's for LB Transportation. Support. Motion made and supported. <coughs> Set a public hearing date of September 1, 2015 um, for an IFT district for LB Transportation. Um, any discussion? Any questions? Rose, would you like to comment on that? We'll bring more information back at that meeting as far as cost-wise and what we're looking at and what they're looking to put in there as far as an assembly plant with the transportation. So that's all I have today. And that'll be back at our, our meeting in September, then I'll have all the details. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have a roll call, please. Secor? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Thayer is absent. Miller? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Williams? Yes. Towson? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. I have number two. Resolution R15-14, Relocation of Water Means, MDOT. I'll make a motion to approve Resolution R-15-14 for relocation of the water mains under I-75 at Old King Road, Tatum Road, and Baker Road. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve Resolution R-15-14 Location water mains under I 75 at Old King and Baker Road. Um, when it came time to do the expressway project, I mean, these people know a lot about it. Um, our water, water lines, water mains, I guess, that run underneath the expressway at those locations. Apparently, between then and now, the regulations have changed because they were something like six feet deep only and under new regulations and they're widening the expressway, they had to be 12 feet deep. So what happened is they, they had to be bored underneath the expressway and run new water lines and then connect those to the so, um, What happened is that the 
township I had to get the estimates and all that kind of stuff and contract to have that done it you know just went through the same process <clears throat> and it was like a hundred and eighty some thousand dollars so now part of that process will be reimbursed from MDOT but they part of the process is us passing a resolution and then we once we do the resolution we'll get it to MDOT I said we're going to pass it um, we'll get it to MDOT and then they'll process everything and then they'll cut us a check to reimburse us for the amount that was put out to, for that expense so I think I left out real Miller, yes. Thayer is absent. Williams? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Secord? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Thousand? Yes. The motion is carried. to approve checks number 58640 through 58769 in the amount of $214,822.05 as presented. Support. Put the name and supported to approve checks. Wow, glasses aren't even working. 58640 through 58769, the amount of $214,822.05 and five cents. Anyone have any questions? Review the ledger. Everybody else set? With that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Okay, okay, now we're down to board comments. Mr. Williams. No comments at this time. Heather. Thank you, Bill, for coming in and giving us an update. There's a lot of hard work we've done this summer and all year round. So you say you never get in class. By the way, there's a customer on the swamp. <laughs> um, and Chief 2-2 for all work you're going in and putting up for the future. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Secord. Um, Billy, thanks for everything you did with uh, the ball teams and the ball fields and the river cleanup and you've been, you've been really busy. Uh, Steve, I've had several comments on how beautiful everything looked coming into Bridgeport and the, the flowers and the, the, the things that you've done. Um, just awesome. Even my own wife said something. That's pretty tough. <laughs> you know, Pat, uh, Thanks for your, your update and the way you've, uh, you've devised to spend the money that the taxpayers have awarded you wisely and across the board. That's been really good. And, um, Dave, thanks for what you've done with, with your people. And I know that uh, you were looking to do some part-time work and it wasn't working out. You're going to do some full-time instead. And I'm, I'm, glad that, I'm glad to see that you're moving forward. And, uh, I always embarrass her, but my girl Tracy's pretty good too, helping me. <laughs> <laughs> and Rose, you've done a lot of job. I just can't thank the people in the township enough. It's just been, it's been, uh, uh, it's been a pleasure to work in things, and, and even our big problems turn into small problems because we have so much community support. So, thank you.
last weekend and they got that pain itself. She kind of learned a new experience about how much time was involved in, in <laughs> preparing a vehicle and getting it ready, but it's setting up the carport now and it looks really nice. So it's got some more work to do, but the big stuff is done. So thank you for that. And then also I just want to mention that um, we had lost one of our former code planning and zoning administrators, Larry King, last week. And he worked for our township for over 10 years, so I just wanted to mention that. We're accepting bids for brush collection that was out on the sign. Um, bids are due back in here by Tuesday at noon, July or August 25th. There will be a stream bank erosion control project taking place at the Cass River near Fort Road. That will begin this month and it'll run into September. It's the first site that's being addressed with a grant that the Saginaw Bay Resource Conservation and Development um, Organization received. They're looking for volunteers, so if anybody's interested, what they do is they're gonna go from the Cass River by Fort Road, they're gonna go about 200 feet out, and they're going to be laying trees down and anchoring those trees to the embankments of the river in order to stop some of the erosion. If anybody's down there, they'll see roots and stuff from the trees kind of use those roots crawling in and, and getting that carter out of the river. So Bill's working with them and it's a great thing because our river's kind of just, I think Jimmy can see that from his property. It's just, yeah, it's washing away. mid Michigan Waste Authority has some dates and times available where they are accepting um, household chemicals and electronics for drop-offs. It's down on the bulletin board in the lobby and also on our web. So if anybody's interested in looking to get rid of some of their stuff, that information's there. Um, Chief Duffett's been invited and they accepted the honor. All expenses paid, so it's no cost to the township to send him to a one-day training by Legacy Advisory Group at the International Association of Police Chiefs at the police headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. The meeting's scheduled in the middle of this month, so again, no cost to the township, so it's an honor, and he accepted that honor to go there, so that's great. The street project over in Sun Valley, Circle Drive, Greenbrier, and Briarwood, I don't have any update on that other than they're working on the design process. So if anybody asks within the next couple months, we'll have more information and I'll share that when we have that available. Ron Wheatley, our current building administrator, has shared that he has accepted a conditional employment offer with the city of Bay City. So by the end of the month, we will be losing him. So we will be doing some reorganization and, and working on what we're going to do and, this is all new, so I don't have a lot of information to share other than he has an opportunity that he is going to go for. So I hate to see him go. And then just thank you to Bill and Pat for your present presentations tonight. Oh, one other thing, Bill had mentioned the encampment that's going on back on the island. Personal invitation to everybody to attend that, and I'll have that here if anybody wants to see that. So that's all I have. Um, yeah, I'm thankful to both of you also for, for your fine report. Um, and Bill and his crew um, done an excellent job of getting our ball diamonds in shape. Um, had a lot of people comment on how nice they are. In fact, I think there's what, one or two leagues or something that want to rent our field to, to utilize it. So that, that's a good thing for us. Help offset some of the costs for that. All right, now at the last board meeting, we had some uh, public comment on the sidewalk issue. And we had some residents uh, get up and they had questions relative to their walkway and that kind of thing. Um, most of those have been addressed by Ruth Ann. I think everybody's pretty well satisfied now. Um, one of the gentlemen that got up there had, had made a comment that he had checked around and Bridgeport was about the only one, I think it was close to the only one around that had the residents pay for the sidewalk. So uh, we did some checking. And the ones that do are the city of Franklin Booth, Tidwasi Township, Saginaw Township, and the city of Milwaukee. I think I mentioned at the last board meeting that, that we wish we had their budgets and, and their pocketbooks um, because we 
be able to make it a lot easier for us to do that kind of thing too. Um, and the ones that don't, uh, Thomas Township in the city of Saginaw. Pass the cost of repairs for sidewalks on the property owners. Birchwood Village has an ordinance that also passed the cost on to their property owners, except they just recently got a, a two mill millage. And they're thinking about either offsetting the cost or, or whatever. Um, the city of Auburn is a 50 it's a 50 Again, I wish we had the money for a whole lot of things. That, uh, yeah. Well, is there anything else you wanted to add to that that I, I forgot relative to the sidewalk? No, you covered it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, getting back to the Humvees. Um, I know I've mentioned before that the Humvees we got from the federal government program that is given to, in the case of the Humvees, um, we have to either keep them or give them back, or I believe exchange it to another department if they want to do something, uh, do something to that effect. Yeah. Um, most of the other stuff that Dave has been getting has a one-year stipulation, and if for some reason we decide we don't want to utilize it after a year, we can sell it. The other thing as far as the Humvees, the Humvee that was just recently painted, um, Miller Auto Body, Bob Miller donated the labor, they were at work on it. Um, so basically, uh, I believe the cost of the paint, which we got at, at cost. The quality auto uh, gave the heck of a deal uh, the paint at cost. So they're not getting any profit on the So basically, no, there's not money coming out of the township funds to, to take care of those vehicles. Correct. Okay, just to clear that up. So no misunderstandings. Okay. I think with that, we make a motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and decided to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.